So, in the past, I used to teach something called the esoteric teaching. And the funny thing is, I mean, really, this is, this is a great joke. In all the time that I was teaching, nobody ever asked me what I meant by the esoteric teaching. Nobody ever asked me, and nobody ever heard. Why? At that time, I was teaching the esoteric teaching as bhakti. Now, I am teaching the esoteric teaching through the secret of the golden flower. To me, I'm still doing the same thing. To me, nothing has changed. How is it possible, right? Okay. By the esoteric teaching, I seek to redefine the concept of the absolute truth. All right, the absolute truth in philosophy is an old concept and what it really means is like the sub, sum total of everything that exists. Well, I would like to even extend it and say the sum total of everything that could exist, or can exist, or may or will or has existed, or whatever. All possibilities. Otherwise, there's no way to explain God. Is there? So, my concept of the esoteric teaching is actually the reality, the existence, the whole, whatever you want to call it, the Tao, or God, or whatever, that which is, and was, and will be, and can be, or could be, even if it's impossible, okay? So that's why this Jain logic, this uh, system of seven logic values built from the ground up on the idea that you can have multiple points of view. Okay? And we experience that every day, don't we? So that's the reality. Now there are all these different systems trying to explain the reality. Why? Because it's easier to think about words. <laughs> it's easier to understand and manipulate words. The reality is actually quite robust and resilient and uh, tends to <laughs> ignore our efforts to change it, deal with it, manipulate it, manage it, or whatever. Different teachings are simply this same problem expressed in different words. That's all. It's all bullshit. It's all just words. It's all symbols. And it's all... Uh, complex game of definitions and logic. In other words, ontology. I keep hammering on this ontology. Onto why? Because by ontology you can understand is how everything is bullshit. Okay? Nothing, no simulation, no form of expression or categorization or analysis or definition can accommodate and express the full nuances of the reality. 
and especially when talking about the space of not knowingness or even can't knowingness, those things which can never be known, the unknowable, the apophatic, the inexpressible. Uh, who can even say what it is? It's just that there's nothing you can say, period. So, the problem is, when people create these systems, they screw it up by, well, I, I understand their motives, you know. They're trying to make it understandable. <laughs> because if you try to talk about the way it really is, it's just like, I, you can't say anything. So, all right. Let's make a make-believe world that sort of sounds like reality. And then we'll talk about that. And that's what they do. They, they're world builders. Huh? And that's a beautiful thing. It's art. It's fantastic. But it's not real. See? So the Taoists talk about Tao, but they don't know Tao. The Buddhists talk about Buddhism, but they don't know Buddha, or they don't know the Nibbana, or whatever it is. And the yogis talk about Samadhi, but they're all too busy running around and doing stuff to even really experience it. And then the Christians talk about Christ, but they misunderstand him too. Huh? And it goes on and on and on. The scientists talk about science, but all the stories in the news are, are how a scientific quote unquote studies are, cannot be replicated in something like 60% of the cases and how all the papers being filed are just bullshit that nobody reads and it's just to get tenure and to bring your stats up? Come on! Okay, and what to speak of politics? <laughs> Forget it. So, all right. There's the reality. Huh? This beautiful stone wall here. These beautiful trees the sky, the weather, the, the birds and animals, huh? That's why I came out here to do this one. It's like a bigger topic than will fit in the room. <laughs> that uh, reality is inexpressible. Experience is inexpressible. The way we experience the reality, huh? Really, isn't it? There's no words for it. But different systems have evolved structures of classification and relationship called ontology, which give meaning to this impossible to understand, unspeakably beautiful and complex reality. Okay, so that's the esoteric teaching. The esoteric teaching is not, oops, any particular explanation of the reality, but rather knowledge under the hood, huh? the, the, the do-it-yourself reality generator project, right? How are these things made? These religions, these systems, these languages, these systems of representation, whatever you want to call it. Huh? Religions, philosophies, these world-changing ideas that when, when people grasp them in a certain way, I mean, look at how, how Hitler grasped Wagner and, and twisted his message to support his agenda and then used it as a, you know, or any politician grasping anything and spinning it to support their agenda, right? This is going on. Same thing in religion. I was born in such and such a family and I identify as a member of XYZ religion and I have a spiritual master and I've been involved with this organization my whole life and my whole social network and family and everything is a village and everything is related to it. And then somebody comes along and says, what you're talking about is bullshit. Well, of course, what's going to happen, right? But here I'm saying that everything is bullshit. 
that every system of knowledge is only an abstraction. It's only a system of relationship, of terms. And of course, the very system itself, any system, has to have biases, assumptions, and foregone conclusions built into it. The interesting thing is, of all these systems, they all have something in common. It may be explicit <clears throat> or it may be implicit, but all of them are a process of becoming. For example, communism says we are in the process of becoming a people's state. Democracy says we are in the process of becoming government by the people, for the people, and so on. You see? And every religion is saying, we are in the process of proving to the whole world that this ours is the best religion. Well, they're all the best religion if you believe in them, you know, if you invest in them, if you get emotional about it and reactive about it and start blaming others who think differently, yeah. Yeah. You're going to have, your whole life is going to be a drama of my system of thought versus theirs. Is that really how you want to live? Is there a way out of this? Well, yeah, sure. Yeah. Mahavir got it right. He said, Syat. Huh? In some ways, before everything he said, every conclusion, every step of reasoning that he made, Syat, in some ways, from some points of view, in some world systems, in some views, in some people's experience, in some ways, it's like this, or it isn't like this, <laughs> or it both is and is not like this, or whatever, okay? So <laughs> just because I believe a certain way and I use a certain language and system of terminology, uh, I do that deliberately because I want to highlight certain points and not because I have an investment in those particular terms. I belong to an organization that promotes that terminology or that system or that view or set of relationships. Huh? Not that I am a recruiter trying to engage you in the same no, no. I do it very consciously, and if you had gone back to the beginning and gone through all these videos, especially matrix learning, you would understand how it's done, and that I'm doing it deliberately, and it's an act. It's bullshit. It's art. Try to understand. It's not something I believe in not something I would die for or fight for or any of that because it's, it's an act. It's phony. It's an assumed identity. It has nothing to do with who I really am or what I really am. That can't be explained. Sorry. Huh? The door to experience it, however, is open. You can experience it for yourself. And what you'll find is going to be completely different from what I found, most likely. But that's okay. That's okay. So we find in every system of knowledge, every religion, every process of self-realization, a process of becoming, of trying to hit some target aiming for some goal and some process of transformation to get you there. It's about transforming your being. Now some people get it all wrong and they even take that to be words and they think it's about transforming your mental understanding. Well maybe that's the first step because unless you have something as a reality in your ontology you won't be able to experience it much less create it. 
And yes, we are talking about creating reality. Creating reality. There's an old Sufi poem. I forget who it's by. Maybe Kabir. Where he says, My prayer goes out. And I hear no echo. Is there a God who hears? If not, my prayer will create him. If not, my prayer will create him. This is bhakti. But I don't see the difference between that and Paticca Samupada. <laughs> Paticca Samupada says you create a name and form, huh? which a, a name is exactly a semantic, lexicographical, lexicographical, sorry, ontological system. And a form is simply the visualization of that system in your imaginary mind. And by creating many, many thought impressions of this, samskaras, one begins to create a new form in, in actuality, in reality. And I'm talking about your reality, your consciousness, your experience. All right? This is the mystic. This is a stage beyond religion, beyond rules and regulations, beyond practices that can be written down and taught. This is something you have to discover or create for yourself. Huh? Using the knowledge of how religions are created, how semantic systems are created, how these visualizations are created for your own aims, for your own desires, for your own tastes. So it's not a one-fits-all, one-size-fits-all uh, shop. No, from the very beginning, Syad, from some points of view, this looks beautiful. From some other points of view, that looks beautiful. See? Now, you, you can waste your time arguing about that, or you can just say, well, I like Monet, or I like Picasso, or I like Degas. See, it's taste. It's a matter of taste. It's not something to be argued over, fought over, to become bitter enemies over, to, uh, to want uh, revenge for. <laughs> not at all. Some people are going to love Orthodox religion. That's their taste. You know, and I'm not trying to convert anyone from one religion to another. No, don't do it. But if something inside you says, this system is not big enough for me. This system doesn't, doesn't fit me anymore. It doesn't meet my needs anymore. You owe it to yourself to look around. That's all I'm saying. And if you find something you like, fine. Learn it. Adopt it. We give you all the tools how to do that. But we're not saying you should have this system or that system. You can create your own system. That's fine. In fact, that's ultimately what everybody does. Those who become enlightened, who make it, who reach something, they have realized something unique, each for, them, for himself or herself. That's self-realization. Kaboom. 